Hi Claire. Hi. This is Claire Black from Moffat, Moffat Town Hall Trust. Uh, we're having a little bit of discussion about community resilience and what the experience has been like in Moffat and, and for you and for, for the, the, the group that you work with as well. So just want to kind of run through a few few questions and a bit of conversation about this. Um, you know, can you tell us a little bit about situations you've been involved with in relation to community resilience, anything specifically from your own experience? The, obviously the major experience that I had was during COVID and probably had very little to do with resilience before that. I was already working at the Trust and so um, as soon as lockdown started we um, sent leaflets out to every property in our DG10 area and then set up another a number of strands to, to help people during COVID. Um, they ranged from online befriending through um, gift packs to the elderly living alone with things like chair exercises and so on. But we also did food parcels, food delivery, shopping, prescription collection, um, and, and you know, a whole host of activities around that. So what did what did that feel like for you as a worker and for a local organisation being in, you know, becoming involved in all of that work and all that huge range of activity? Um, it, quite stressful, I think. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm honest, at the start, quite exciting. There was mm -hmm. an emergency, and and we were all pulling together. I think we were very lucky here that we already had. A bank of volunteers that helped us with our normal activities. We already had accounts with food providers and places like Booker's and so on. So we had a sort of platform from which to start. Um, but I suppose the, the things that sort of struck me as we went on was the demands it was placing on all of us, mm -hmm. particularly over such a long period. So yeah, a range of emotions from a sort of initial sort of oh, what we're we going to do through in the end to feeling very tired from it all. Mm -hmm. um, but also a feeling of great support within the community, people coming mm -hmm. forward to help uh, from things like when the restaurants had to shut, bringing their food to us, allowing us to use their freezers to store food. Um, so a real pulling together of the community. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, just I mean, to add to that a little, little bit as well, but who, who you worked with mm. in, in those circumstances as well, you've mentioned the kind of local community pulling together on that. Are there any other organisations that you, you worked with in we've always, that period? Sorry, yeah, we've always had a good um, relationship with Dumfries and Galloway Council. Mm -hmm. um, so that was great. Uh, and they certainly were one of our biggest grant givers. Um, we worked with other funders. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think of other local groups. It was more individuals and small local businesses who gave us financial support. Mm -hmm. um, as I say, our volunteers that came forward, local businesses that printed leaflets for us, businesses that um, helped deliver our meals on wheel service, that, that sort of thing. What does a community response bring to any resilience event and what difference does it make? Okay, so it brings a coordinated response to any incident in accordance to Jessup principles, which allows us to analyse the situation in accordance to all variables, um, because it adds local knowledge, which ensures that all variables are considered during the incident and we get support where support is needed at a time that it is needed as well. When we did our de um, gap analysis, um, for response to incidents. We found that out of hours especially, the response is slightly slower. However, communities are on the floor from the get-go. They can open up a rest centre within minutes. I think the, the quickest that we've had during an incident um, where we had a house fire um, was around 15 to 30 minutes. And the communities, two groups stood up one for the rest centre for the communities that were affected and another for the emergency services so that they had a safe place. Because we have to remember our emergency services are responding and they don't get a chance to rest. So that was 30 minutes. This was out of hours on a Saturday um, on a football weekend. So we were quite busy, but the communities helped incredibly and that incident was over in three hours so actually by the time that we'd got to our housing department down the incident would have been finished so the communities fill up that kind of 
useful role of having almost instantaneous response. And in a larger, longer term incident, we would then be able to boister and evolve that rest centre by uh, um, um, making sure that our housing support, our social work and all other needed support mechanisms were down there at that rest centre, including our wonderful volunteer sector.